All right, so this video is the uh, how to implement a custom provider for the data importer. Uh, so there's a lot you should really kind of understand about how this works is that the inside Sitecore, the data importer map, and if you've used this before, you'll see that I've revamped the UI. You're selecting the data source to pull from. You're selecting your definition that you should use and and then you're running the import. Um, what happens here is that it takes this import setting, it looks for the class in the assembly using reflection, it will build the class and run the process method. The process method will then uh, get all the fields and try to loop through them and import them from the data that you've provided. Uh, so basically, you're creating a class that extends a base data map that is behind, standing behind this functionality. So when you want to create a data provider, uh, you're going to be extending this class, this base data map class, or a subclass of it. In this case, I'm going to be using MySQL database importing as, a, as an example. So the base data map is an abstract class that provides, again, like I said, all the functionality for getting your fields and a couple of abstract methods that you need to define yourself. And then you know, a handful of uh, utility methods. These are the most thing you're going to have to be concerned with is this abstract methods that you have to define. The first is get import data you're going to return an innumerable of objects. So the objects are probably, in the case of MySQL, going to be data rows. Um, for Sitecore, it was uh, innumerable of items. Uh, whatever, you know, if you're using XML, it could be an XML node, or if it's an Oracle, I don't know what it is. Um, but here's where you, that's the method you'll define, you know, actually getting that data. Uh, the process custom data is a method that you know we're just giving you the new item that has been created the existing imported row of content and basically you can do whatever you want with it you know if you want to strip out content or you know anything custom that you want to do this is the method that you'll do it in uh, the get field value again like the base data map doesn't know what object you've uh, pulled from wherever and it doesn't so it doesn't know how to get a field from it so you define it yourself that way the rest of the code can just kind of operate independently uh, other than that it's really all you need to define um, so in this case where we're going to use a create a MySQL data map uh, I'm basically just gonna extend the SQL data map because for the most part it it still returns data rows, and the only thing that's different is the get import data method because it has to use a custom uh, connection, custom connection class, which is it's an open source project here. I've already downloaded and included in the project. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is create this class. This is going to be an extension of this SQL data map class, a subclass. I said the only the only other thing that you need to provide is a constructor that takes these three. Um, parameters and passes them basically to the base data map. This is because when this class gets created through reflection, those three parameters are passed to it. Now, once you've created that, I'm actually just going to copy this straight out of here. Kind of update what I need to define. To 
And now I just have to swap this information out. So do set is actually the same. This is going to use a MySQL connection, which again was already referenced in this project. Uh, you can put it online. So this, I believe, actually operates a little differently instead of taking pass it into this object. Data source, close it. This is still the same, this is still the same. So now we have to find a I basically told this class how to connect to the database, get the information, and that's all I need to know. The the process of you know that we're not actually gonna do anything custom with this, and the only thing that I need to know is get the uh, how to get a field name from the data row. It's the same as the SQL, so we're all set there. And we also have this uh, constructor. So we build this class. And now what we need to do is go into Sitecore and build the content that uses the, the UI the end user will end up using. So down here under templates, Modules, providers, we're going to create. I'm first, we're going to have to let Cycle reset itself. Insert a new template. In the products folder. Now we want to set the best base templates as this base import map. Same as the class. And then we want to create a standard values. So the standard values is going to require you to define the class. and the handler assembly. And that's just for the to predefine it so that any others that we create uh, will be already set up. So I'm going to add the uh, oops, to find an icon so that it's easily recognizable. Um, I also want to create a branch template for it. What this is is just when you create this object, it creates the fields folder for you. It's just kind of nice to have. I'm going to change the icon under here. I just want to insert a fields folder. And then the last thing we want to do is on the data import folder is add the insert options for this branch. That way it just makes it all that much easier to get started. So now that we've done that, I've already created this uh, content folder for the MySQL import items. Now here in the uh, system modules data import, I want to create a MySQL import map. It's got the classes already set up. 
Uh, what we need is the query. And I've already kind of defined this. Uh, I've already gone and queried the, the PHP MySQL database. Um, I'm using a silver stripe CMS with a, a site already set up. And I'm just going to import a couple of sub pages from it. I don't really want to go too in depth about how to set this up, but essentially I already have the query here. Uh, I'll save that. So, you know, at this point, I'm going to need a template to import into. I haven't created that yet, so I'm going to do that now. And basically, what I've queried for is a set of sub pages. They're page types, they're special page types called sub page. To make it simple, I'm really only going to uh, import two fields the menu title and the content. The content is going to be a rich text field. So now I'll go back to the MySQL import map. I can tell it where to import, and it's my SQL import folder. The what template I'm going to use is this sub page. I'm going to pull the name from the menu title field. Hit save. I'm going to go and define these two fields. They're both text fields. One is the content field. Both the to and the from are going to be the same. Um, Same with the menu title. So now that I've got the field set up, I've got this map set up. I have the class uh, defined. Now all I got to do is open up the import map. And I've already predefined the connection string for this MySQL database. I'm going to use the MySQL import map. Um, I'm going to run the import. If you <laughs> successfully completed import, it doesn't tell you anything. I'll change that before I release this. Otherwise, this will uh, give you warnings and errors, uh, just letting you know that if you've missed, you know, if you didn't define a handler class correctly or a handler assembly correctly, it will just tell you that. So let's go see what we've got. So these are the pages that we've imported. Um, the, the, uh, the, what you get imported isn't necessarily uh, <laughs> what, you know, you're going to have to figure out a way to, to filter that out using those custom field types, which I'll, uh, I'll go into in the next video. But, but you can see really connecting to uh, any kind of data source doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You can set it up pretty quickly once you kind of get the hang of it and uh, get right back to importing your information. All right, so the next video will be about creating custom fields and importing that data, uh, how, to, how to customize you know, individually. So if there's going to be a new property or whatever it is you want to import, I'll explain how to do that too.